Larry Martin, host of Heartbeat of Kansas City. It's good to have you with us on our program today. We're at the Alice Plaza Hotel where uh, they've just entered a, a wonderful meeting, a historical meeting, I understand. And uh, with me is Marilyn Griffin from Ministries of New Life. And Marilyn, um, it's good to have you on the program today, and thank you for taking time to be with us. We really appreciate it. I um, well, just want to ask a few questions because we have a lot of tape that we want to show on the program today. But the first question is, what is Ministries of New Life? Well, Perry, uh, Ministries of New Life is a ministry that is called to seek the Lord in prayer that we might experience an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, that's done in different ways, but basically that's what we're about. We believe that God wants to touch his church again, and we believe that he moves through leadership so we are a ministry uh, one major aspect of our ministry is to work with our local leaders in uniting them together primarily for prayer that we might see the Lord move in Kansas City but we believe for the nation and even the earth that the Lord is going to move in these days Amen. So by, by getting the leaders together and praying together, then asking God's will and direction and that type of thing, then we're just believing God then, as far as your ministry is concerned, that, that God will lead the leaders and, and the leaders lead the people and get behind what God is wanting to do in the land. Well, that's great. Um, how did uh, Ministries of New Life begin? Well, uh, the vision of it, uh, the call on my own life, I came in my youth, but I thought it was missions, and I thought it was this, and uh, I sort of didn't really understand what the Lord was doing. But uh, in 1979, uh, I was heading up a meeting and was before the Lord uh, at 11.30 at night one night just praising Him for what He had done in this particular meeting. And while I was worshiping Him and praising Him and praying, He sh just laid on my heart in a real clear way that He was going to raise up prayer. And He gave me at that time to have a night of prayer. Mm -hmm. He told me uh, when to have it, and so we uh, waited on Him. And uh, it came to pass at the time he told me that it would come. And uh, that was actually a group of women. And he had told me that he was going to use women. And as women, that was in 79. It was not then until 1984 that he really released me to make it public. But then as soon as we made it public, he called us back into prayer again and said, now continue in prayer. Then it, So we stayed in prayer another three years. But in 1987, then, uh, after an all-day of prayer and fasting, at the end of uh, 1986, he said, in 87, now move with the leaders. And we began to invite the leaders to come together for a breakfast and share with them the vision for the National Day of Prayer. And so we began with the leaders in Kansas City in 1987, and they began to come together uh, once a month for prayer. And we, we believe repentance is key in the move of God. And so as just as this meeting today was a major emphasis on repentance. So as our leaders come together and the Holy Spirit leads us to begin with leadership, confessing sins and praying. Praise the Lord. So this, this wasn't something that just sprung up overnight. You spent a lot of hours and many ladies in prayer about this. Yes, and so it was a few years before it really began. Um, what happened the first meeting? Did it, was everything there like you thought it would be? Did it all form that day? And, or is it something that's just grown over a period of time or did it really take off? Well, uh, that's a good question, Perry, because you know when the Lord calls you for something, many times as human beings, we think, we just immediately begin to think we know what the Lord's doing. And I have to say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. And uh, that's really the way it was. When he, when he first spoke to my heart, he said, I'm going to use women in prayer. And so I thought it was a women's ministry. Mm -hmm. But so I called women together to pray. And we prayed. And then as we prayed, we began to sense the Lord was laying on our heart, our spiritual leaders. And as we stayed in prayer, uh, it has grown very slow. 
I think it's been very solid, though. It's been a very slow work, but the Lord has been in it. And, and in the meantime, he's purifying the core of all of us all the time, you know, cleansing his people and purifying his people so that he can build. But it has not been something. Prayer is just now being reestablished in the church, in my, in my humble opinion. I just think we lost it. It's like when the Babylonians came in and took the treasures out of the temple. This is what the enemy has done to the church. He's robbed the church. And so God is now reestablishing those treasures that will break open the heavens. And he's going to restore, I believe, that which has been lost so that he can move. That's beautiful. And one thing I did notice today that is, is, is not a particular denomination that's involved. I noticed there were a lot of different men from a lot of different backgrounds. Yes, we believe, uh, I firmly believe that Jesus knows who belongs to him and his body is the, all the church. And so we reach out to the liturgical, to the evangelical, and to the charismatic. We believe that all of them uh, have a part in this. And only the Lord knows. Uh, we're not worried about being contaminated. That's not our worry. Jesus said um, he would take care of the tears. And uh, so we we just go, if they love Jesus, and we can pray together. We're not there to discuss denominations. We're there to pray. And we find the Lord blesses it. He really blesses that. And we've found such precious brothers in all branches of the church. Praise the Lord. And I'll tell you, that is exciting. This morning uh, was a historical time as far as ministries and new life. And we have a lot of footage to show. So if you might, just for the audience, uh, lay a little footwork and, and maybe enter, give us an introduction of what took place this morning. We began to feel the Lord speaking to our hearts about this a type of meeting for Indians, Native Americans, that we there had been many offenses and they needed to be repented of. So we began to do research on it and it's taken many, many hours. But that is the basis for today's meeting that we found that there had been five tribes of Native Americans that once occupied the metropolitan area that were had been pushed out. When we researched it, we found there are actually six chiefs because one tribe has two parts to it. But we went to these chiefs and asked them if they would come to Kansas City. And we believed that we needed to repent of those offenses that we or our fathers uh, have committed or our ancestors had a part in, and we would like to do that with them if they would come. And they very graciously said they would love to come. And so this is what today was all about, was their coming. Something, Perry, many Christians I don't believe understand is that they don't understand that we can repent of past generational sins. Nehemiah did it. Daniel spoke this way in Leviticus 26:40, I believe it is. He says that if you will confess the sins of your fathers, I will touch the land. Well, it was an exciting time. We're going to go right now to the footage of, of the meeting and, and let the folks in our audience view that. And then right, right when we're done, we'll come right back, all right? Because I have a couple more questions I want to ask you. Oh, God, would you take us through this process, oh, Father, of righting the wrongs that have been done to the Native Americans? God, would you take us through this time that could be dangerous, Lord? Father, the enemy would seek to put many snares in our path, oh God. But Lord, we say your grace is supreme and rules over all things, oh Lord. Oh, we thank you, God. Oh Lord, when we've been there, 10,000. When we've been there, 10,000 years, bright shine.
begin with the tribes, the five tribes in alphabetical order, the first being that of the Delaware, but they're first in other ways too. They were the largest uh, grouping of Indians at one time on the east on the east coast, occupying most of the present state of Delaware, New Jersey, and the lower part of New York State. They were first to make a treaty with the United States government. They were at that time in this treaty uh, looked upon as a sovereign nation, promised rights uh, as, a, as a state within the Union, promised representation in Congress, none of which they ever received. But from that time on, they began a slow march westward in seven stages. The seventh move was to Kansas to that uh, area uh, between the two rivers uh, where, the, where the Missouri and Kansas join, uh, downtown Kansas City, Kansas now. From there westward was the Delaware Territory. And I quote from that treaty, this is to be your permanent home. Lewis B. Ketchum, present chief of the Delaware tribe. To our host, uh, fellow leaders, ladies and gentlemen, I'm most honored this morning to represent Lenny Lenape, the Delaware Tribe of Indians, a proud and dignified people known to our Indian brother as the Grandfather Tribe. Since our departure from Kansas, our tribe has continued to uh, experience a trail of shattered dreams and broken promises. Our people have fought gallantly to maintain tribal unity and status. Our elders are faced with having to explain to our young people that we are Delaware, not Cherokee, that the loss of a nation and an agreement with the Cherokees in 1867 does not change who we are. Through all of this, we've never lost our dignity never compromised our principles, and we've always understood the strength and power of forgiveness. Thank you. We come now to the Kaw, K-A-W, or Kansa tribe. Kanza, their other name that uh, gave uh, Kansas its name as a state. The word meaning wind people. And their spirit has been like the wind, always free, roaming. They've always maintained their tradition as hunters and trappers. We are honored today to have the great grandson of Chief Alagawahu with us, the vice chairman of the Kaw Nation, Luther Pepper. Well, I consider it a great and special honor to be uh, representing the Kaw or the Kansa tribe or nation. This morning, as a brother said, uh, being the great grandson of Alegawahu, who, as he said, was the chief at the time that these moves were made. But you know, as we all know, that we cannot undo what was done in the past. We can only, and neither should we, dwell on what has done in the past. But that. Uh, as our Lord Jesus Christ said in his word that if you forgive not your brother, neither will my Father which is in heaven forgive you. So with a forgiving spirit as I being a minister of the gospel that, you know, I preach forgiveness, then I couldn't be, well, be uh, considered worthy to preach a gospel that I don't live myself. 
So in my own heart, I, I don't hold any grudge against what happened to my people in, a, in, in back in the years gone by. Like our brother said our, here that, you know, we're striving to go forward rather than to let the things that happened to the, our ancestors to hold us back. We come now to the Osage, <coughs> the second uh, native tribe. In addition to the Kansas, in Kansas, the Osage were, uh, had a marvelous and vast empire. The land they had to settle on was 166th of their original tribal lands. We are so pleased and blessed to have Chief Charles Tillman with us today, the present chief of the great Osage tribe. Oh, what a great day it is to gather up and to join hands and praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be here, Christian people? And I tell you, it, it really warms my heart to come to a place like this in modern day times and we look back upon history. And in that history we see our faults and we recognize those faults and we bring our faults before our Lord Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. And with that, I would like to thank the new ministry, or New Life uh, Ministries, for inviting me here. I'd also like to thank Mr. and Mrs. Don Griffin for their hospitality of last night and the fine meal that we had. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say in parting at this time from you, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are honored to have with us Chief George J. Captain, Chief of the Eastern Shawnee, Chief Captain. I am very glad to be here today. Really, this brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> we owned a million six hundred thousand acres here, Johnson County. Probably ten years ago, I received a check for one hundred and eighty six dollars for my part. The people who needed this money, who needed help, received nothing. And I will say this. Our Shawnees walked from Ohio here, and we walked to Oklahoma. God must be looking our way a little bit now. A meeting of this type. My great-grandpas, uncles, and so forth are buried here. The prophet Tecumseh's brother is buried here. Where? We don't exactly know. I have a map of where the country's supposed to be. Our people are fairly well educated. We're coming along, and we're going to do better. I thank you for the privilege of coming here, and I just hope that I've enlightened you somewhat. We still have problems, and we will, always, like any other group. But with God's help, we're going to solve them. And we've worked at it a long time, and we'll keep working at it. So thank you very much for this privilege. Thank you. The last but not least tribe, the Wyandot, for which Wyandot County is named. A tribe that goes way back, within 40 years of the discovery, supposedly, of Columbus of this hemisphere, and their chief, Leaford Bearskin, exemplifies that nobility of spirit. And we are grateful to you, Chief, for wearing your uh, chief's regalia today. 
Would you come, sir? I have come to speak some words to you. I will speak those words and then I will go. First of all, my message to you, the first one is this, that you pale faces sure have got this country all messed up. <laughs> Down in the Florida Territory many moons ago, we discovered some old pale face meandering around. He was broke and hungry. His name was Christopher or something like that. <laughs> but you know, we fattened him up and fed him and made friends with him and we put him on his boat and sent him back to a place called Spain. <laughs> well, that's the first mistake we made. <laughs> We speak with our hearts, and we had another saying, that when we felt a strong feeling of emotion, that we said, my heart is big. Today, because of what you're doing, my heart is bursting. I want to say that some of the remarks that were made about the Wyandots, I have living proof. Not of the warriors, but we used to have the fiercest warriors on the frontier and the most beautiful women. I show you a princess in a few moments of our tribe to attest to that. Thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, this morning we come to you and we recognize again that we have nothing within ourselves that enables us to stand before you. Truly, Lord, we are a people who have sinned greatly against you. And we recognize at this moment that confession is an easy thing to do. Lord, we recognize our sin. But yet, Lord, we recognize that repentance is a very hard thing to do. Repentance is hard because we have hard hearts. And Lord, may the confession we make be from our hearts, and may the repentance that we make be enabled by your Spirit. Lord, we ask that you would bless these who have forgiven us and that in the days ahead, that by your grace, you would lead us and show us how to walk out our repentance. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, humble us in your presence. Make us true servants. Open our hearts to your healing power. And renew us. That we can break down the barriers between us so that we can get along with ourselves among our Christian denominations. We are a divided nation. Heal us and make us one with you, our loving and dear Father. Make us again your children and show us how to love and forgive. Amen. Father, we pray your blessing, the anointing of your spirit, Lord, upon this place, upon this meeting, Lord, and that as we go down from this place, that there will be a joy ringing in our hearts uh, that surely our God is in this place uh, and that there's nothing too hard for him. Uh, Lord, let hearts be reminded. Uh, oh, God, that there be love and joy and peace. Uh, Father, bless us that the, 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 the Canaanite of indifference uh, would raise its head and be cut down uh, by those of us who have been enlightened this day, Lord, uh, to the injustice that are still being uh, uh, moved against and upon our brothers. Uh, oh, God, we promise us to lift up your name in every situation. Father, we claim it now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for it and count it done. Amen.
Before we go, uh, maybe there's somebody watching today, pastor or minister that would like to to get involved in ministries of new life. Could you tell us how that they could contact you or, or one of your representatives? Yes, we're at uh, 8340 Mission Road, Suite B16, Prairie Village, Kansas. Uh, 66206, but uh, maybe easier would be a phone number. We're 913-383-3222. And we would be most happy to entertain questions or be of help. We also, any local people, we meet every Saturday from 2 to 4 to pray for our spiritual leaders and Sunday services. And we welcome all members of the body of Christ to be on that corporate prayer gathering weekly. And where's that held at? That's held at that at that address at Ministries of New Life uh, conference room. Okay, wonderful. Well, Marilyn, thank you so much. I've enjoyed the interview. And God bless your ministry. And hopefully many ministers will get involved and the church will go to prayer and we'll see great things done for the Lord. Once again, thank you for tuning us in today. This is Heartbeat of Kansas City, and I'm your host, Perry Martin. If you have a ministry that is reaching out and doing something exciting for the Lord, I'd like to hear from you. If you could write me a letter, you may send that letter to 1500 Central Avenue, Kansas City, Kansas. It's Heartbeat of Kansas City, 1500 Central Avenue, Kansas City, Kansas, 66102. My telephone number is 281-0607. Until the next time, God bless you and keep looking up because the Lord's coming soon. Marilyn, thank you and Lord bless you. Thank you.